hit the like button and click on the link below so that you can get our email list and be put on our email list, I should say. Now, why would you want to do that? Because believe it or not, when we post some videos that dare to question the orthodoxy surrounding COVID, we put up videos that dare to suggest the hypocrisy regarding the outrage over people doubting the integrity of election 2020 and comparing it to the people that have called 2016 stolen. Our videos get banned on YouTube. Shockingly. Frankly, nowadays, if your videos are not getting banned from time to time on YouTube, you ain't saying anything. So if you want to make sure you don't miss any of our videos, click on the link below in the description and get on our mailing list because we've got a country to save. Now, CNN. Jeff Tubin, the one who took out his Tubin and um, pleasured himself while in a Zoom call, got fired from The New Yorker but kept his job at CNN. They put him on administrative leave, paid vacation, brought him back. Well, he's now been fired. Uh, Brian Stelter, the media guy, has been fired. John Harwood, one of their reporters, has also now been fired. John Harwood used to be with the New York Times and with NBC before joining CNN. And during the 2016 debate, he was a debate moderator. And WikiLeaks emails show that Mr. Harwood was contacting the chair of the Hillary uh, Clinton campaign, John Podesta, and bragged to Podesta about a tough question he asked Donald Trump during the debate. Did I mention he's a debate moderator? And turns out he also offered advice to the Hillary Clinton campaign about what they could do about Ben Carson. Because at the time, Ben Carson was rising in the polls and might very well have been the front runner for a while. So John Podesta was getting advice from John Harwood, the debate moderator, objective reporter, on how to deal with Dr. Ben Carson. He too is out. All of this consistent with what the new CEO wants to do, apparently, is to turn CNN back to an organization that people feel is actually fair rather than a tool of propaganda. Here's my question. Why does Don Lamont still have a job? This is a guy who, when Jossie Smollett was blaming MAGA hat-wearing racists for attacking him when he was coming back from Subway sandwich shot with his foot-long tuna fish and claims he was attacked and they were yelling racial and homophobic slurs. Don Lamont contacted Jossie Smollett privately and advised him that the Chicago police were skeptical of their story. Is a reporter supposed to do that if you're a, quote, journalist? And again, he refers to himself as a journalist. And remember when this journalist made this factual statement about President 45? The President of the United States is racist. A lot of us already knew that. All of us already knew that. I mean, it's just a fact. Water's wet, sky is blue, grass is green. Trump's a racist. We already knew that. Now you know it, says Don Lamont, objective reporter, the one who gave Jossie Somalia a heads up that the Chicago PD thought he was full of it when he claimed that he was attacked by two MAGA cap wearing white goons. So Stelter's out. Tubin is out. I didn't mean anything by that. Harwood is out by Don Lamont, one of the dumbest guys on television, still has a gig. The last time we went through a recession, there were stocks that literally went to zero. Washington Mutual, Lehman Brothers, Chrysler, several blue chip stocks went to little or no value almost overnight. Could that happen again? And if it did, are your savings protected? Why not own something that has never been valued at zero? Gold. Historically, your best hedge against inflation, which is rising like a hockey stick as we speak. The savviest Americans diversify their savings to protect them from downturns in the market, from global instability, and from a failing dollar. Do you? Birch Gold Group helps you hold gold and silver in a tax-sheltered retirement account. In fact, 
If you have a 401k or IRA that's underperforming, just visit LarryForGold.com and you can convert that into an IRA in precious metals right now. Visit LarryForGold.com. Birch Gold will send you a free info kit on diversifying into gold tax-free. Hedge against inflation. Protect your hard-earned money. Get your free info kit by visiting LarryForGold.com. That's LarryForGold.com. Do it today. Racism, racism everywhere. I'm not one of these who watches Lord of the Rings, but I understand it's a very popular show. Well, apparently some people have criticized the new casting of the current iteration of Lord of the Rings, and to criticize the casting is to make the critics rah, 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 racist. I want to start by saying these are not real. Okay. <laughs> the new Lord of the Rings series, <coughs> The Ring of Power, Rings of Power, and Game of Thrones prequel, House of the Dragon, are both massive hits, but they don't exist in the real world. Okay, there are no dragons, there are no hobbits, you know, you, you know that. Well, thank you for enlightening us, because I always thought that there were dragons and hobbits, and I kind of wondered why I didn't have any. I kind of wrote it off to systemic racism. And there are <laughs> critics who are saying they were too woke by adding, yes, <laughs> adding diverse characters. Are you telling me black people can't be fake people, too? Yeah. Is that yeah. what you're telling me? You can be a dragon. Well, then, if, 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 yeah. I wonder who these critics are. And does this really matter? So now you can't criticize the casting as being too woke because if you do that, you're racist. And I, like, yeah. I don't know if there's like a, a hobbit, you know, club. I don't know if they're, you know, they're going to be protests. <laughs> but people, what is wrong with y'all? Well, well, their argument is that it betrays the source material. Like, they have apparently, the National Association for the Advancement of Hobbits are they upset? I read the source Tolkien. material. Of course they haven't. Like J.K. Tolkien and stuff like that. But so I'm a fantasy... Hamilton, then. The show, well, the yes, Hamilton. but I'm a fantasy nerd, and you, Whoopi and I yeah. are sci-fi and fantasy yeah. nerds, so I love it so much. And I especially love Mr. Toussaint, who plays the very sexy black man, yes, the rich you black have the man with the, with the dress. Okay, uh, I, I got a headache. I, I don't watch Lord of the Rings. Something tells me this is not something that is going to undermine the integrity of our republic. Something that might, however, is the Senate race in Pennsylvania. Now, Fetterman refuses to say for a long time whether or not he's going to debate Dr. Oz. Hey, John, you going to debate Dr. Oz? Hey, 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 hey. <laughs> well, now, as I mentioned earlier in the show, uh, Fetterman has agreed to debate Oz. They haven't set a time or a place just yet, but they're working on that. And it's going to be fascinating to find out whether or not Fetterman, who is suffering from a stroke, has come back and still on the campaign trail now, is going to be able to handle himself during a debate. Uh, if some of the things he said in the past are any kind of guide, he may be in trouble. And you can count on us to eliminate the filibuster if you come out and step with us we will be able to stand with you in D.C. I gave away the lieutenant governor governor in Pennsylvania, the only lieutenant governor in the history to do that. And let's, let's get some stuff done for America. Who would ever think that I would be the normal, the normal one in the race here? You know, with that. Now, is it me or does this man look like he just robbed a liquor store? Now, there is a former Greenpeace founder named Patrick Moore. And this is pretty interesting. He says climate change is based on false narrative. Did I mention he is the former Greenpeace founder, Patrick Moore? He says Greenpeace was hijacked by the political left when they realized there was money and power in the environmental movement. Are you listening, Al Gore? He said, political activists in North America and Europe changed Greenpeace from a science-based organization to a political fundraising organization. Now, he was with Greenpeace for 15 years. 
but he left in 1986. And he says, the environmental movement has become more of a political movement than an environmental movement. They are primarily focused on creative narratives, stories that are designed to instill fear and guilt into the public so the public will send them money. He says they operate primarily behind closed doors at the UN, at the World Economic Forum, all of which are primarily political, he says, in nature. Same stuff we've been saying for a long time. And he said the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, the IPCC, is, quote, not a science organization. It is a political organization composed of the World Meteorological Organization and the United Nations Environment Program. The IPCC hires scientists, he says, to provide them with information, he puts that in quotes, that supports the, also quotes, climate emergency narrative. He said their campaigns against fossil fuels, nuclear energy, CO2, plastic, and others are misguided, designed to make people think the world will come to an end unless we cripple our civilization and destroy our economy. God, he sounds like Trump. They are now a negative influence on the future of both the environment and human civilization. He says the left has now adopted so many policies that would be destructive to civilization and that are not technologically achievable. He said, just look at the looming energy crisis in Europe and the UK that Putin is taking advantage of. He says, but it's their own making, refusing to develop their own natural gas resources, opposing nuclear energy, and adopting an impossible position on fossil fuels in general, end of quote. I suspect that he's probably not going to become an advisor to the Obama administration or the Biden administration anytime soon. He said many of these so-called environmental leaders are now saying that humans are the enemies of the earth, the enemies of nature. And he says, I could not accept that humans are the only evil species. This is too much, like he said, like the original sin. Humans are born with evil, but other species are good, even cockroaches, mosquitoes, and diseases. He said the new dominant philosophy of the world is that the world would be better off if fewer people existed. He said, but these people are not volunteering to go first. Now, he's a scholar, ecologist, longtime leader, widely regarded as one of the world's most qualified experts on the environment. Got a PhD in ecology from University of British Columbia in 1974, honorary doctorate of science from North Carolina State University 2005. By the way, guess who got D's in science when he was at Harvard? Al Gore. So he left and founded something called Green Spirit, which is a consulting organization focusing on environmental policies, energy, climate change, biodiversity, genetically modified foods, fisheries, and other things. Became co-chairman of something called the Clean and Safe Energy Coalition. So the guy is still involved in, uh, in the environment, but he has now said the environmental movement has been completely totally co-opted for political reasons, all to raise money to fund their own causes. And to do that, they have to use these emergency disastrous scenarios just to scare people so that they send money. Hope you enjoyed that video. The full show is available to watch right now on Epoch TV. Just click the link in the description below to learn more because we've got a country to save.